Well, I love this time between Christmas and New Year's, these days where we get to reflect on this last year. And maybe we don't all get to do this, but there are these in-between days where we can reflect back and look at the mountains and the valleys that this last year held and all the emotions in it. As I reflect back on 2023 with this church, God's people here at 3821 University Boulevard, it has been a year. We have had high highs and we've had low lows. And we lost and we miss our Pastor Brian. And I know many of you have lost ones that are dear to you and your family. And as I think about our year together, the words that come to my mind are these three words, prayer, faithfulness, and joy. Joy in the trenches, leaning on one another in prayer, and God's faithfulness has been sustaining us through the peaks and the valleys that this year held. As I was putting up Christmas cards the other day, I, was, I like to go through and read each of the cards as I put them away, and I noticed this theme this year in the cards that each one had these, or many of them had this paragraph, this elaborate um, couple sentences of all that was accomplished and held in this last year. There were themes like promoted, engaged, expecting, expanding, world travels. And as I put them away and I was reflecting on them, you know, not one of them said words like grieving, waiting, longing, diagnosed. And I wonder for you, what would you put on that Christmas card? Did God show up in mighty big ways and was it a year, a big year for you? Or perhaps you're grateful that you made it, that you're here, and that God is still faithful in that. Last week on Christmas, we focused on Jesus' birth, that very first Christmas morning. And now today we're going to focus on those days after Christmas. Christmas has come and gone, yet the church calendar actually wouldn't agree with us. They would argue that Christmas is not defined or uh, it's not one day. It's actually we're in the 12 days of Christmas, according to the church calendar. And as a way to remind us of this, that Christmas is not just a one-day thing, we notice our Advent wreath and the decor is still up. But whether our church calendar agrees with us or not, as we in our homes take down the Christmas decor and we put up the lights, it feels a little less loud and a little less decorated. It feels as if we're in those days post-Christmas. What now? What next? You know, often when we think about Jesus, I tend to skip from Jesus' birth straight into Jesus in his 30s, doing miracles and in ministry, and we forget that in-between space. And today, we're going to talk about those days, those couple years after Jesus' birth. So if you would open up your Bible to Matthew 2, that's where we'll be today, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. And as you turn there, let me pray for us as we open God's word. Lord, would you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to receive what you have for us this morning. We thank you that your word is living and active. Lord, would you prepare us on this New Year's Eve for 2024 in the ways that you are leading, that you are calling. We are here, Lord. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's start in verse 1 of Matthew 2. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the one who has been born of the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now, I want to stop this one second while we're reading, and I, there's a couple of things you need to know about this story and the Magi. If you might have heard this word, the Magi, also referred to as the wise men. And they were these non-Jewish people who studied the star, the stars. Think like a star-led wizard or a sorcerer. And if you think of the word magic, that can help you remember Magi. And now what you need to know about the Magi is to the Jewish people who Matthew, this book, is written to a Jewish audience, to the Jews these people, the Magis, were the outsiders, the idolaters. They were the ones who studied the stars. They didn't study our God, the God of Israel. They worshiped the stars. 
And it's in this moment that God uses the very thing that the Magi loved as the means to lead them to himself. God comes to them where they are to lead them to Jesus. Let's continue in reading in verse 3. It says, When King Herod, who King Herod is the official king of the Jews, when he heard this news, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. Now, of course, bear with me as I give a little commentary to each verse, but of course King Herod is angry and disturbed. He was king of the Jews, and the Magi's were saying someone else is king of his people. And then it goes on to say, all Jerusalem with him. There's one of two reasons why all the rest of the people would have been upset and disturbed. The first reason is because, might have been because King Herod was an angry king, and they were feel fearful for their lives. If he was angry, what did that mean for them? Or second, they could have been disturbed alongside King Herod, that people who had never heard the prophecy or the scripture were headed to their potential Jewish savior. I would argue that most likely the first option, but either way, everyone was disturbed. So naturally, we continue in verse 4, when King Herod, he calls together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, and he asks them, where is the Messiah to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. Then, verse 7, Herod calls the Magi secretly together and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report back to me, so that I too may go and worship him. Verse 9, after they had heard the king, they, the Magi, they went on their way, and the star they had seen, when it rose, it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. I want you to notice the response. There's three different people in this text, and there are different responses to the news of this child. Herod was threatened. The chief priests and the teachers, these Jewish leaders, they were indifferent. And yet the magi, the outsiders, they were in awe. Or in verse 10, as it said, they were overjoyed. The reason this is interesting to notice is because the Jews in the stories were the ones who knew the prophecy. They had heard the Old Testament scriptures. They knew um, from their parents, from their grandparents, from their great-grandparents. They would have said, yes, I know the Savior will be born in Bethlehem. Yes, he will be a descendant of Judah. Yes, he will be our king. And yet, as they're hearing in the scripture, as they're hearing that the, their prophet, their Savior, their Redeemer might be here, might be born, there's no record of movement. I can relate to this posture that they have. I'm busy, I'm tired, I'm worn out, and they're just saying, you know, they can go and check it out. I'm sure we'll hear if it's real and if it's true. They can drop a pen. I mean, it's highly unlikely that God is going to use those people to reveal himself. And that's the temptation for us religious people. We can often feel like we are able to coast because we already know all about God. And then we continue in verse 11. It says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened the treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We see this is that very first Christmas when gifts were given to someone. They encountered Jesus, they worshipped, and then they gave gifts. And then our final verse is verse 12. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to King Herod, they returned to their country by another route. On New Year's Eve, on New Year's Eve today, this is a day more than ever that people are thinking about, reevaluating, making goals, creating a vision board, picking a word. And it's a day in the when the world is saying all you need is perseverance, grit, and determination to create a new, better version of yourself. No time square ball required. The interesting thing is that there's also the shadow side of New Year's Eve resolutions. When people discover that grit, grit simply isn't enough, that self-help books don't satisfy our soul, soul and that perseverance can run out. 
there are actually two holidays in January where, where people, um, they're national holidays that people commiserate in giving up their New Year's Eve goals together. Did you know this? On January 12th, it's called National Quitters Day. <laughs> and then on January 17th, it's called Ditch New Year's Resolutions Day. On average, less than 10% of people are able to keep their New Year's resolutions. One article ends with this encouragement and solution. It says, of course, if your 2024, pa pa if your 2024 plans don't pan out, there's always 2025, which is almost here. You know, New Year's brings out this desire to change, to grow, to get better. Alongside this reality that change is hard, new habits are difficult, and always improving can be exhausting. And it's in this world of earning, of striving, of self-help, of trying to build our own little kingdoms that God enters in. He's always been here, but he comes to us, God with us, in the form of a person, in the flesh, and his name is Jesus. Instead of giving us a book of rules to follow, God gives us himself. God took on flesh so that we can know the answers to our deepest needs, so that we can know who to point to, who to say is our king, where to receive abundant life and forgiveness and the rest that our souls long for. God is on the move and pursuing us and loving us. The question is, how will we respond as we encounter Jesus? Will we have fear like Herod? Will we, have complacent, will we be complacent like the chief priests and the teachers? Or will we be in awe like the Magi? The Magi story in Matthew 2 is this beautiful picture of who God is and how God will go to every length to show us his love and to draw us to himself. The Magi story gives us this beautiful New Year's resolutions to follow. Follow the light, encounter Jesus, be forever changed. And I want to go through these three together. Follow the light. The light not only came into the world, but the world was drawn to the light. Do you ever get so lost on, um, ever get so lost on the path that you forget the destination? Perhaps this isn't you. I know for my husband, Steve, he can get, he gets laser focused on the destination. He says, no bathroom stops when we're driving, pedal to the metal, Unless there's a Bucky's, that's the exception to the rule. But he gets laser focused on the destination. And I'm someone that enjoys the journey. I enjoy taking a detour, stopping at a gift shop, and enjoying the, the path along the way to the destination. You see, I can appreciate that God gave the Magi a star to follow, not the exact play-by-play -play instructions. There's room to rest, to take breaks, and to stop at that gift shop. For the Magi... God provided a star to lead them to the destination, to follow the light. For us, God provided Jesus, who claimed to be the light of the world. He promised that whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, and he gave us his word to help us follow him and know his voice. What we find in this story of the Magi is that the kingdom of God is wide enough, not just for the outsiders, not just for the insiders, but for the outsiders. Not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, rich and poor. It's not just for the ones who have it all together. It's not just for the ones who can pray out loud. It's not just for the ones who are at church. The kingdom of God, his love, his grace is here for all of us pursuing us. Whether you are a lowly shepherd or a wealthy Gentile pilgrim, there is good news. The light of the world, Jesus he sees you. He loves you. And whether you feel far from God or distant or unlovable, God loves you and sees you. And he's become flesh in the person of Jesus for you. Follow the light. You know, it doesn't take much searching to see the darkness in the world. As the death count rises, as war continues, as evil surrounds us, Perhaps you experienced darkness in 2023 firsthand. And it's in Jesus' life and work that we find that there is this unshakable hope. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, God defeated death and evil and sin, and it no longer had the final word. The light of the world, Jesus, shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. Follow the light. Second, encounter Jesus. 
As the Magi encountered Jesus, what was their response? Their response was to bow down and worship, to get low. They had spent their entire lives searching the stars, and they stopped their life's work because they found the answer that they had been searching for. They found someone worth following, and it impacted everything. The beauty of the good news of Jesus is that it's not something that we can produce or manufacture on our own, but it's what we need most, and it's what others in our lives need most as well. In a world that says, try harder, produce, accomplish, the Magi come and get low. They surrender their lives to Jesus. It almost seems counterproductive. I'm someone that I'm type A, I like to accomplish, I like to do things. It seems counterproductive to sit with Jesus, to try to look to encounter God. And yet, it's in this encounter with Jesus and getting low that the Magi are transformed. Haley Ruth Barton says, explains the transformation this way. She said, this transformation, it goes deeper than behavioral tweaks. Jesus causes change at the core of our being. You see, we are unable to save ourselves, but God sees our exhaustion. He sees our brokenness, and he says, I am here. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Follow the light, encounter Jesus, and lastly, be forever changed. Verse 12 mentions how the Magi went home by another route. They departed another way. And on a surface level, this could have simply been an update in their travel itinerary. But I believe this is an indicator for us, how God's leading in our lives. It changes us in the way that we go. That as you encounter Jesus, it changes you. It changes how we see others. It changes our ability to love and forgive. It may not change our circumstances, but it does change our outlook. It changes the weight, the shame, the direction of our lives. You see, the Magi, they came, they encountered, and their lives were forever changed. The light not only came into the world, but the world was drawn to the light. What if this year was less about what you are doing and more about who you are becoming? There is good news. The same God that showed up and drew the Magi in 2,000 years ago is pursuing you and wants to show up in the mundane, ordinary of your life of my life. Will you say yes to the journey? <coughs> How will you respond? Will you get low and surrender the year to Jesus? There is so much transformation that God is longing to unleash in 2024. I want to give us this space right now in our prayer time. Actually, to wrap us up, I want to, I know often we talk about encountering Jesus and creating the space to dedicate the year to Jesus. And I want to give us time to do this. So I'll, I'm going to open us in prayer and give about 30 seconds for you to just surrender, to get low, to whatever you want to do to, de to dedicate the year to Jesus. And I will close us then in prayer. Would you pray with me? Lord, we pause right now and we get low and we surrender and dedicate this year to you. Whatever that might look like, we pause to do that. Jesus, we want to follow you. Dethrone false kings in our lives. Give us an encounter with you right now. We surrender our lives, our year to you. It was yours to begin with, but often we take it into our own hands. So right now we give 2024 back to you, Lord. We set our eyes on you. And as we seek you, as we encounter you, Lord, through your spirit, would you help us respond in awe and receive that joy like the Magi? Move in mighty ways. We long to experience, Lord, this abundant life, this forgiveness, this freedom, this grace that you offer. Do a work in us that is only possible by you. And as we are changed by you, Lord, 
Help us as your church be like that star. Help us be a light to those who search. In Jesus' name, amen.